Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to style the components with React. Here are the timestamps. Down there is a like button. You know what to do. Now let's jump into the code. As always, we start by creating a new React app. So npx create React app test styled components. Now let's start our app. So we are start. Okay, the next thing is I want to remove everything from app.js, just leave an empty div here. And we don't need this app CSS and we don't need this log either. So now let's say I want to create a button component. So I will go to my source and new file and let's call it button.js. And in here, let's do function button and it will return a button with all the props that are passed to it. Like this. And now we need to only add export default button. Right now let's go back to our app.js and let's use our button component. So button with capital B and let's do test button. And as you can see, it has been imported here and here I'm using the button and here is my test button. Okay, so let's jump back to our button component. And in order to style it with styled components, we need to install styled components first. So I will do yarn add styled components. All right, now let's import our styled components library. And as you can see, we import library with this styled keyboard. Now let's define styles for our button. So I will do const styled button equals styled, that is our styled components library, dot, and now the name of the element. So it can be div, p for paragraph, but we will use button. And now those ticks. And here we put all CSS we want to use. So for my button, I will do background color CCD and color will be almost dark. I will add some padding of let's say five pixels from the top and the bottom and 15 pixels from the sides. No border, but border radius will be five pixels. Okay, so now we have defined styles for our button, but as you can see, this constant is not used anywhere. So now instead of doing this button, I will put styled button here instead. And as you can see, the styles of this button have changed. So styled, then dot, and the name of the element. Now let's go back to MJS and let's say that we want to have a second button, but with more padding. So test button, more padding, and let's add a property here, padding. And let's put here 15 pixels and 20 pixels. Now, as you can see, this button has the same padding for now, but if we go here inside the button, here we have the definition for our padding, but we are passing this props padding to our button so we can use it in our styles definition here. So here inside our padding, we can do something like this, props and then props padding, or as a default, we'll use this. So now, as you can see, this second button has much more padding because we have put more padding here, padding 15 pixels, 20 pixels. And this property is passed to button here and then to our styled button. And we are using it here. Now let's say we want to do more changes to CSS based on a property. So let's go back to app.js. Let's create another button here. And let's call this one test primary button. So we have it here. And now let's add property primary. And inside our button, we can create a group of styles for this property. And to do this, we need to do props and then 
props primary and then we want to add extra CSS so I will now import it from our style components and now CSS and now ticks and here I will put all the CSS I want to add for the primary button. So let's say that primary button will have white text and the background color will be 49E. So now as you can see, when I go back to AppJS, button with primary property adds those two CSS roles to the button. That's why it's blue and with white text. Now I will show you how to inherit CSS. So let's go back to app.js and let's say we want to create a completely different button, but we want to get all the CSS from those buttons. So I will create a new component now, new file. Let's call this one tomato button.js. And here I will do function tomato button and export default tomato button and here I want to use this already existing component so I will do return button and I will pass all the props I get and let's create our tomato button here tomato button okay so for now it's gray because it's getting all the CSS properties from button but now we will change it so now let's import style components and let's define styles for our tomato button. So we will do const, let's call this one tomato, equals, and we want to do style, but instead of doing dot and button and defining all CSS from scratch, I will do parentheses, and here I will put our button element. And now I will use this tomato component here. And as you can see, nothing has changed because now I'm using this tomato component that inherits all CSS styling from the button component. But here inside, I can override the CSS that button has. So let's do color. The default color will be white for tomato button and the background color will be tomato. As you can see now it's tomato red color because we are inheriting all the CSS from this button but we are changing color to white and background color to tomato. Now let's say we want to have an underline if we hover mouse on our tomato button. So to do this, we can just add the styles here. So ampersand colon hover, and here we define text decoration underline. And now when we hover, we have underline. Now let's say we want to add an icon to our tomato button. So I will use hero icons and I will use this question mark circle, for example, copy JSX and let's go back to app.js and here inside our tomato button, I will add this SVG icon on the beginning and I will put this tomato text inside a span element. So now you can, as you can see, we have this big question mark icon. And if we want to style this icon, we could create styled component just for this SVG element, but we can also style from our tomato component. So here, same as we do for hover, we can do inside this tomato button, let's style our SVG. And let's say it will be float left and height will be 20 pixels. Yeah, it's not perfect, but you get the idea. Let's also fix this tomato text. Let's say that inside this button, every span, element will have font size of 20 pixels. Yeah, now it looks better. Another important part with style components is global styles. So let's say we want to add some styling for the body element. So I will do, instead of importing style components like this, styled as a whole library, I will do curly brackets and here I will do create global style. And with this, we can create global styles for the whole application. So let me define them here. I'll name a name const global styles equals create global styles. And here inside, let's do body will have padding of 20 pixels. Now I can use my global styles here inside my app global styles. 
like this. And as you can see here, I have some padding in my body element. For more tips and tricks, you should definitely visit Styled Components website, or you can check my other videos, for example, this one, where I build Stack Overflow clone using Styled Components. But that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please click the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Have a nice day, and see you in the next video.